special treats and we're going to take you on a little journey Lovely. Your own career and, and maybe some moments from Ireland's centenary soccer history so the game against Qatar tonight it's a very special night we're wearing a, a blue yeah. kit and blue 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 uh, why blue is the obvious question blue is the question um, in 1924 the FBI played their first game against uh, Bulgaria at the 1924 Olympic Games the FAI had just been founded a couple of years beforehand in 1921 and to gain admittance to a competition they needed to go in under the auspices of the Irish Olympic uh, yeah. Council. So the FAI would have wanted to wear a green shirt um, the newly formed IOC which was only formed the year before decided as they were funding the team and the journey that they were going to recommend that we stick with our traditional St. Patrick's blue shirt. <laughs> So uh, that didn't. St. Patrick was blue. Is that that's, right? I wouldn't. That's, have... the, that's the traditional colour. Has he got the, the green rock? St. Patrick. The pictures we have him in is a. Uh, it's green. Green. Yeah. Enough, this this is the St. Patrick's blue colour. It's still on the president's flag of Ireland. Um, yeah. So Umbro Amazing. Ireland this year have honoured the men of 1924 with a special blue centenary kit. We actually had worn blue since 1880, but when the split came around in 1921 between the two associations on the island, uh, it was decided that we go and get our own particular green shirt which started yeah. in 1925 so this is a very special shirt tonight and it really honours uh, everyone who's gone before them so yeah. it's a friendly it's, it's a, very it's simple okay. isn't it it's not kind of overly fussy is it no I think the lads to, will enjoy try wearing to, that try to keep the the, the large crest yeah. which was a feature back in the day obviously the material has changed we'll, we'll, we'll go through that yeah, it's very lightweight with the special embroidery so it's a very very unique kit uh, in our history now this shirt, certainly for me, is what launched uh, my interest uh, and has led to the creation of IrelandSoccerShirts.com. This was Jerry Daly's shirt that he wore against Wales in 1980. Um, it's signed by Liam Brady, but you can see O'Neill's have actually introduced the, the piping down the sleeves, the collar, the yeah. press, um, the stitch number. So again, for a lot of people, maybe like me or a little bit older, the mid 80s certainly was a time when they became involved in football. And I know you, have your own experience as a fan back yeah I think so so I would have been at the time of the 80s now probably getting to 10 years of age I was just getting into club football there up at home farm and this would have been the Ireland team of the early 80s I'd say it's just in my memory yeah. just have small little visuals of that particular team I was never to Lans I was never in Lansdowne Road to be honest only one occasion when I was younger I blame my dad never put his hand in his bloody pocket like and bought me a ticket but I was ball boy there for a game in the early in the early 80s and it would have been this team and you forget really, I wouldn't have uh, realised it at the time, you forget how good this team was. I think when Jack came in and it all kind of took off, Eddie and the famous players that we had there, this kind of uh, a group of players was forgotten about. You mentioned them there yourself, Jerry Daly, Liam Brady, Frank Stapleton, Dave O'Leary, Mark Lawrence, and yeah. could go on and on. Chris there was Hewton. The, the team that owned hand actually, I suppose, passed over to Jack yeah. Charlton. The nucleus was there. Oh, what a group. Really, really strong uh, squad. Okay, Kenny, I don't think you've probably ever seen this shirt before. As a dub, this is going to take you back. I'm it's, thinking Kerry. You're, you're I'm thinking, thinking Kerry looking at that jersey. Thinking Kerry, and you'd be right. Um, this is the, Why is that? This is the 1985 shirt that Ireland wore against uh, Norway in a World Cup qualifier. RTE were on strike at the time, funny enough, so there's no RTE. Yeah. They're never happy that RTE crew, are they? So it's all no, about money. It's all about big, bigger wages out in that place. There was no footage of the game. So <laughs> O'Neill's decided to try and, uh, I suppose, inspire uh, an Irish team that was flagging that they would model the shirt on the Kerry All-Ireland winning jersey. So No way. There was, so what, there was a Kerry connection. Uh, Amazing absolutely. that, isn't it? It is. So that was the plan. Uh, Frank Stapleton, who was captain on the day, is rumoured to have said in the dressing room when he saw the shirt, <laughs> he's rumoured to have turned around and said, what's this? This is a Kerry jersey. And to which one FAI official said, if only you'd play like them. Now, this is a jersey, and I suppose a moment in time that really needs no introduction to anybody. Um, I'm going to show you the number, Kenny. And this was a very oh, special right. on the 12th of June, 1988 in Stuttgart when Ray Houghton famously scored a goal against England. It was our first ever international tournament. Not the, not obviously, not the jersey. We'd have to... The... The jersey. The jersey. No way. Do you want me asking you how you got your, got your hands on that? I could tell you, Kenny, but I'd have to kill you. <laughs> so this is a very, very special piece of fabric for people in my generation. The design of this shirt in particular with the mesh sleeves. Yeah, yeah, that's... Quite yeah. distinctive. Yeah, uh, clearly, yeah. The FAI had changed sponsorship in 1986 to Adidas and Adidas brought a kind of a, 
a more modern twist and a more modern take with more modern fabric. Um, there's no doubt that the success of a team is mirrored in their shirts. So if your team's not doing well, nobody likes the shirt. When the team does well, yeah. So if you ask any Irish fan, this kit style is probably up there as one of the more... Looks a bit lightweight, let me have a... Yeah, you can even feel it there, can't you? In comparison to clearly, obviously, yeah, the other, the, the other end of the spectrum, but... Yeah, looks a bit classy, that, doesn't it? Now, Kenny, we're gonna to touch on a goalkeeper again. Um, and this time we're back to Italian 90, okay? And we go to Genoa um, and a, a, a round of 16 game against Romania. Uh, when a certain big man from Donegal, a former teammate probably of yours, um, made an iconic save in a penalty shootout. George Hamilton uttered the immortal phrase, a nation holds its breath, and we did. We did, I can remember distinctly as a 12-year-old boy in front of the television, just just couldn't breathe. It was just such yeah. a, it was just such it a was, seismic, seismic moment. So again, this was quite a distinctive shirt. It was only ever worn in this one game by Bonner because he was traditionally wearing his yellow shirt so again um, very much of its era with the with the big elbow pads and again I'm trying to think which elbow pad hit the ground when he, he made it which was right. right he would have died that's right, right. would have yeah. been the right one would have been that one right. there yeah. yeah so again uh, a very iconic kit and I suppose for a lot of people when they see this it brings back incredible memories um, yeah it was amazing even prior to that game we'd done amazingly well didn't we just to get that like, to, to get out of the, the group really yeah, yeah. and there was, it was almost there was a negativity around the the egypt game yeah uh, and then but to progress from that group to get through holland to get through england uh, and then to get through romania and get a crack at italy in rome uh, was fairly special and to just come up short against them one nil uh, in rome against the holders was really i mean it was an exceptional Effort it was, made. but I think this was this was the pinnacle of this particular it, game, wasn't it? I, I think it was. I mean, it was this, yeah, you, you made a quarter final, of course, but ultimately the way it obviously the was way it that finished, game, there yeah. was disappointment there. But this, I think this, those moments when Packy made the save and Clearly, what we all really shared in, inside the stadium, I would have been, I would have been in Dublin, obviously watching the game. We know what the reaction was like at home. The whole country, it came to a standstill. Whole country went up, home. didn't it? So again, at time, even though it's only 30, 32 years ago, it was a different Ireland. Um, but it's something that it still evokes great passion and memories amongst the fans. So that's very much a, a classic from our history. Now we progress to the sweltering heat of the Giant Stadium in <laughs> 1994. Uh, shirts became a lot bigger, uh, you know, physically in size. And we rolled up to play the Italians in the Giant Stadium. Uh, this is Tommy Coyne's shirt from the game. One funny story about the game is the Irish team walked out into the tunnel just before kickoff wearing their white kit only to realise that the Italians were also in their white kit. And it turns out that maybe somebody got the kit choice wrong. I don't feel so bad now putting yeah, that, yeah, put that, that number four, four jersey on. So they had to yeah. hastily change into their green shirt, which a lot of players said kind of took the nerves away from them. This was one of the first times that the Irish language was actually incorporated into a football shirt. So lovely. So we're curling on down, yeah. which means... It's a nice up. touch. It's a lovely touch. And I yeah. think, I think to, to associate our national language with our shirt... Um, you can see the tricolour has been included into the collar. Yeah. Um, and then Ray goes and scores that iconic goal and we win 1-0 in one of the most famous victories ever. It means a shirt like this, I think, is... is now that looks a lot better up close, I've got to be honest with you. I kind of remember this shirt from the pictures, but um, I'm more impressed with it now up close, even kind of this, this kind of effect yeah, here. Like, yeah, the design, it's missed a lot when you're watching the match. You're, you're watching the game, you're looking for the result. Um, and I think it's only when you see them close up in the flesh that you realise just how nice. I see, the, I see this, Ryan. Here. Eddie, any chance of my jersey back? Uh, Ray <laughs> Houghton. You'll see that <laughs> quite a lot, Kenny. You'll see that quite a lot. <laughs> now, Kenny, this is a shirt that we would have worn against Yugoslavia. Again, you can see a large size. Somebody's already signed it for me. Wow. Wow. Very special player. Went on to Captain Ireland. Did you know that? No way. You have got one yeah. of my jerseys here. Yeah. Well, you signed it for me because you were part of the team that day and it was against Yugoslavia. Now, maybe you can fill us in on uh, your memories of that campaign with Croatia and Yugoslavia. Yeah, I suppose this is the campaign, really. I was just in the squad a, a couple of years and uh, we got drawn with Yugoslavia and Croatia in the qualifying campaign. That was leading up towards 2,000, 2000 yeah. euros, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, these, are like, uh, these were good sides. The first game was... Um, Croatia in Lansdowne Road and I, I have distinct memories that particular day in terms of the atmosphere it was a sunny day it was an afternoon kickoff. was a little bit unusual we generally played in the evenings yeah, didn't we yeah. big crowd atmosphere was absolutely rocking and it was a really good talking about the Croatian team here now Davil Suker Boban Boban Boxic yeah. 
Krozineski, Yarny, even defenders there. Serious talent. Yeah, yeah, serious talent in that team. And they were bouncing off the 98 World Cup. They got to a semi final. Yeah. yeah. And we, we, I think we caught them on a good day, don't get me wrong, but we played well. Everything just went right that day. It was, you know, everything was in alignment. The crowd, the atmosphere, maybe even driving to the game. Sometimes you get a bit of a sense of feel that there's something, something special. special. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And we played well. Dennis, I think Roy got the goals early on. We were tuning up after 15 minutes. The game finished kind of 2-0 two, two and it was, a, it was a great day. It was, only, it was a one-off game in the qualifying campaign, don't get me wrong, but it does stand out, to be honest, which is one of those days you come off the pitch and you're kind of you're satisfied. I can't remember my own particular performance on the day, to be honest, but collectively the team, it played well and it was a real kind of buzz and it was, it was almost magical, to be honest with you. Now, Kenny, as I said, we would uh, bring back some happier memories from the World Cup in 2002. We wore our green shirt um, for the three games. Some really, really special moments from that. Uh, Matt Holland's goal against Cameroon, um, Robbie Keane's goal against Germany, and then we proceeded to beat Saudi Arabia 3-0 in Yokohama. Personally, as a fan, I was very fortunate to be at the World Cup, uh, follow yeah. the team. I was very fortunate to be staying in the team hotel in Chiba City um, and to follow the team. And as a fan, I can only tell you that it was the most incredible three to four weeks. Uh, yeah, so I know you got the Saudi Arabia uh, jersey there. Saudi Arabia being in the news uh, yeah. <laughs> at the moment for uh, other, other reasons. reasons. But yeah, but the three games, it was amazing really. The, a little bit of nervousness, I remember a little bit before the Cameroon game. Like I said, we'd kind of suffered so much up to that point to get to a major championships. Found ourselves one nil down in that game. I was on the bench uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the first game, actually on the bench for all the games. But there was that bit of a sense, second half, oh, oh no, one nil down, we lose this game. Is it all going to come apart? Is it going to end up in disappointment after all? After all, the, Yeah, the exactly. So that, that goal from Matty Holland when it came, whoosh went up and from that moment on I felt he got that bit of a sense of oh, we're on our way here now maybe something could happen in this tournament uh, the game after that as well in Germany went up to an, in a, another level now I was lucky enough I came on the last couple of minutes against Germany Stan had to come off his legs were, <laughs> legs gone. His, legs were, his legs were literally gone I remember walking off the pitch mix out get warmed up I was warmed up I was ready to come on and I looked at Stan coming out his legs were literally gone I was thinking I, I feel as bad as that that's how my legs felt I was that nervous coming onto the pitch I couldn't even tell you if I touched the ball in the six minutes I was on the pitch but I remember that moment when Robbie put the ball into the net but that couple of 10-20 seconds after the goal pretty much stands alone if you're saying maybe one moment in my whole career I mean that when, when I thought wow this is this is amazing you can literally feel it it got into your skin in terms of the energy inside the stadium OK Kenny so we move on to a kind of a 2004 kit style um, I believe this kit style would have been kind of the last kit variations that you would have worn um, during your international career this was from Kevin Cullen. yeah Oh, that's almost that's silk, isn't it? That's yeah, almost yeah, like yeah. oof. We've, we've really we've yeah. progressed in terms of umbro design uh, and fabric. But what was it like, I suppose, stepping away from the Irish jersey after after all that time and all those caps and being captain? Yeah, um, do you know what? I tried not to dwell on it uh, uh, too much um, at the time, and even even now. I mean, even these jerseys you've got here, Eddie. I've got my, I've got would have nearly all of these, as I said, packed away. But I haven't gone. They haven't come out too often, I mean, it's, I know it's 15, 20 years since I retired, but maybe they've been out once, so I've opened that zip once and, and, and peeked in. Is, is that a conscious thing, you don't want to relive it, or is it just that yeah. they're put away and that's a different part? Of yeah, I think it is a little bit, you put them behind and you kind of move on. But like I said, me personally, like there's a lot of kind of... Uh, yeah, there's a lot of hurt in those jerseys yeah. as well. And that's another thing to say. I know we're talking here about the jersey and, and, and what it means for you, like, you know what I mean? So, yeah, a lot of that stuff I had to kind of bury and just kind of a, a, and leave it there. But I must admit, when I, it's funny enough, when I just see the, uh, the colours here, you know, it does. I must admit, I, I don't feel those kind of negative connotations. It is very positive and those kind of good memories uh, come back. So maybe in... Due course, maybe over the next couple of years it'll come a time I'll go in, I'll get those jerseys out and, and even my caps to be honest with yeah, you. No, yeah. I've spoken to a few former internationals who kind of very much the same kind of experience. It's almost like they've they've put that away, they've they've boxed it away and they don't want to delve too deeply into it. When when I'd be thinking as a as a, I suppose as a fan, I'd be thinking, imagine having played for Ireland seventy two odd times, being part of a World Cup squad, yeah. the Ireland captain. That surely is a source of massive pride. It's it's where they lead you really. When you look at those jerseys, they they take you down a certain path, and that invariably means your teammates, 
It means the supporters, uh, managers, acquaintances, stories, nights out. It's all of that, isn't it? It's all of that well, rolled up. I've written a new book called Green, White, Orange, the history of the Irish soccer kit from 1921 to 2021. And what we're aiming to do with the project, it's a not-for-profit project, is just to raise the awareness of the, the our history. Um, you mentioned the players and the people. Something like only 517 men have played for Ireland in the last 100 years. So you're part of a very select club. Um, the game of football permeates every part of this country, every every village, um, yeah. kids, adults, grassroots, internationals. And there's over 200 different museums in this country dedicated to the likes of um, books and art, which is vitally important, but we also have transport museums. We have museums for agriculture, we have museums for alcohol, we have museums for leprechauns, we have a GAA museum. But don't tell me that the Irish football team and the game of football hasn't given so much yeah. to, to this country. So again, that's really what we're looking to do. And it's to honour people like yourself who play for Ireland that we have this collection. Yeah, well, I can say that happening sometime in the, in the near future. I think it'd be a good thing for what you say, for everybody who'll come in and see a jersey, it'll strike up a different memory uh, for every person that passes through. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, more good memories than uh, than bad. bad.